Okay, um, people have been requesting some information on the 17-day Kelly Day cycle, and I'm going to do a off the top of my head quick abbreviation of what we're looking for. Um, first, let's start off with the Kelly Day. When I first came to the department, this is for all department personnel, uh, I was explained that I was going to get four days off a year without pay, and that was a half truth. What it really means is that. Um, Mayor Kelly from Chicago has attributed to the credit of this is that there are four times a year because of the Fair Labor Standard Act and also the Code of Federal Regulations state that a online firefighter can work up to 53 hours a week before you have to start giving them time and a half for every additional hour after that. And there are four separate times a year that in a 28-day cycle we get 120 hours back to back, which means that we would be paying out about 28 hours of time and a half to every firefighter on every shift. And basically, it was costing everyone a lot of money. So Kelly said, okay, we're gonna give you a day off and then we'll just reconstitute your pay. In other words, it's a paid adjustment day. So you still get paid the same hour, uh, same salary you were going to make, except that now you're going to get paid more per hour. Let me explain this, okay? Say you're making $40,000 a year, and you end up having to work 121 shifts a year, and you're getting paid your hourly rate based on your 24 hours on, 48 hours off. Your hourly rate is somewhere close to about $15 an hour. But let's just say we just converted your hourly rate to you'd work one hour a year. Well, you're still getting paid $40,000. You're just getting paid for one hour. So less hours means higher hourly rate. So worked out fine. So it's not a mandatory day off without pay. It is a paid adjustment day. So that's the start off with just to explain what a Kelly day is. Now, why would we have 17 of those days? Well, because we have to work at most 53 hours a week on average. That's the pay cycle. Now the Code of Federal Regulations and the Fair Labor Standards Act says that a pay cycle can be anywhere in increments of seven. In other words, your seven day cycle, 14 day, 21 day, or 28 days. Uh, the department I work for currently works on a 28 day cycle. So at the end of the 28 day cycle, if on average our weekly work is beyond 53 hours, we get paid time and a half for every hour that's after that. In my department, uh, we work a 54 hour average week, which means that four time, uh, 13 pay cycles, we're going to get four hours of time and a half on our pay cycle. And you're like, okay, fine, whatever. Four hours of time and a half, 13 times a year. What really is that? Well, that's 52 hours of straight time in the given year. Now, now remember, if you end up taking an A day, a vacation day, whatever, in that 28 day cycle, then you obviously did not work that additional four hours extra. So let's go worst case scenario. In my department, I've got a vacation, it's anywhere between two to five shifts within a given year. So let's do worst case scenario. Uh, I do a vacation of two shifts, one part of the year, and then three shifts another part of the year, and they both reside into two different pay periods. So that means in a 28-day cycle for one of my shifts, I actually didn't work overtime, and another, I didn't work overtime. Same thing for my three shifts. Let's put them right in the middle of two pay cycles. So out of the 13 times that we get paid four hours of time and a half, I can't accredit them for four of those 13. So I'm still getting paid nine separate times a year where I'm getting four hours of time and a half. Well, let's say someone is new and couldn't get any time off, no vacations, whatever, or didn't decide to take any vacations. They're eligible for about 68 hours of time and a half over the course of the given year. Now, let's take a rough estimate. Say your fire department has 100 employees working on their shift. You take 78 hours and you times it by 100 employees. Let's just pick an average hourly rate of say 15, $15 an hour. And then you multiply that by three shifts. You're getting 350 plus thousand dollars a year that's being spent on firemen that are just showing up to work. They're getting paid overtime, but you really can't give them any time off because it'd be an, like one hour increment a week, which doesn't work for us. So. Basically, everyone, without knowing it, has to work um, four extra hours within a 28-day cycle 13 times a year, and it costs roughly for 100 personnel per shift 
the department somewhere around three hundred and fifty thousand dollars if no one was taking any time off. Uh, and I've already proven that, like, if you ended up working within a certain amount of pay periods, then you could reduce that by nine thirteenths of that cost. Um, now, why did they do a Kelly Day cycle four times a year? Well, in those times that you were getting 28 hours of time and a half, four times a year, you multiply that together, and that's 168 hours of time and a half, or straight time, uh, for every employee that's in your department. So 168 hours times 100 personnel times an average uh, hourly rate of, say, $15 an hour times three shifts is going to get $756,000 payout in overtime just for showing up to work. So that's why we do the four Kelly days. Now, there are 121 shifts per year, okay? Uh, so how would it work for a department with 100 personnel per shift? Well, you start off with 100 personnel. You change your pay cycles. Instead of 28 days, you change it to a 21-day cycle. Why? Well, there are seven shifts that reside in a 21-day cycle. So you have to let out of, say, 100 personnel, now minus the four supervisors that are in my department, okay? Uh, the reason I'm minusing those four supervisors is that the Code of Federal Regulations and the Fair Labor Standards Act said that anyone that's on salary, it does not require a Kelly Day, okay? Uh, anyone that has any questions about that, I'll go well into detail on what it's like to be a salaried employee compared to a 2448, but for right now, I just want to stick with um, just the online personnel. So you have 100 people in your shift. You minus the four supervisors, that's what it would be in my department. Get you 96 people. Those 96 people within a seven-day cycle, which is three weeks, would have to be off. So 96 divided by 7 means that there are 13.7 people that need to be off in that three-week period. So, so there's no 0.7, so let's say it's 14 people. Uh, let's say that your department, just like mine, is like, I want to give the guys a Kelly Day that are supervisors. Okay, so you take 100 personnel, divide it by 7, you end up with 14.2 personnel and you can't do point two so let's just say 15 okay so you take that 15 and you have to let them off every single shift so 100 personnel minus 15 people get you down to 85 personnel let's say that your personnel has a bare minimum staffing of say 80 people have to maintain so 80 people asses in the seats right so you've got 85 personnel with all the Kelly days pull it out which means you got a five person buffer not five person buffer can be used for uh, your average sick time and uh, basically in my department there's about three personnel that call in sick uh, consistently every shift it's an additional two person buffer you might have walk-in wounded military leave suspensions um, for whatever reason you have it you have that buffer now out of those five person buffer if you don't count the sick and whatever you multiply that by 121 shifts per year, and then you divide that by the 100 personnel that's available. In other words, this is what's left to take off for vacation time, A time, uh, paid time off, whatever you call it that you accrue. Uh, that means uh, divide it by the 100 personnel. You'd end up with like 6.05. In other words, just six shifts that you could additionally take off per year for all 100 personnel in the department, and that would also include the 17 Kelly days that you'd end up getting off per year, which would get you up to, what, 20, 23 days off a year, basically. So not a bad deal. Um, now, when it comes to, like, hourly work, you're like, well, who's going to go for this? I mean, basically, right now, my department is working 54 hours a week. Um, if you were to do, like, a long shot and say, okay, 54 hours a week over the course of 32 years, uh, my 32 because in my department you have to work 32 years if you want to max out your benefits for um, retirement but you also have to be 55 years of age so how many years would you actually work hourly wise um, you would actually work 43.2 years out of a 32 years because of how many hours you work more than 40 over the course of a year so in other words you work 11.3 11.2 years more than a regular 40-hour workweek employee because you're actually at work. Um, the 17 Kelly Day cycle will reduce it to about a 48-hour workweek. Uh, reason being, in a 28-day cycle, there are seven shifts. If I have to give you a day off within that seven shifts, that reduces you to an average of six shifts within a three-day cycle, which is a 48-hour pay period. Within a 48-hour pay period over the course of 32 years, you multiply the hours in the weeks, you come up with 38.4 years that you will work as opposed to a 32 years because the hours you work 
and that would mean that we work more about 6.4 more years than any our 40 hour work week person so for the most part we're still going to work more than anyone else that is not in the fire service uh, we just regulate it now I'm, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants here this isn't something I came up with this is something that I've researched myself and I'm all about if you don't understand ask questions and start educating yourself uh, I put this brief video together just to give everyone a little sample of what it looks like but it's a lot more complicated when it comes to it's a lot more extensive than what I've just written down or what I've just stated out in public uh, and if you have any questions please just uh, reply on the YouTube account that I'm putting forth on here I'm currently taking a break from social media um, a, a cleansing if you will so I can't be reached that way but um, my email address is k s h e r r i t at gmail dot com if you want to email me phone number is seven seven zero eight one five three three six zero I can get a little bit more detailed um, some of the research that I found, how it can work for you, how it can work for your department. Um, and um, it's just a first installment. It was just done off my phone quickly because I have some friends of the fire service that uh, wanted some information, share it, and they just want to give as much accurate information as they can. Uh, for those that was just a little bit too complicated, please just give me a call or email me. I'll, I'd love to answer all your questions. Uh, for those that was just too dumbed down, that's fine too. We can get in a conversation, try to get a little more technical involved. Um, and that's it for right now. Good luck.